I'm gonna apologize in advance for this horrific facial hair. There's just not enough time in the day. Hall effect switches are the newest trend and buzzword coming to the keyboard market and are soon gonna be everywhere, just before you know it. But is this actually a buzzword or is it actually science? And will this actually improve your gaming performance? Or is it another one of these preference things everyone talks about? Today we're gonna to explain just what Hall effect switches are and how they're gonna implement it into all the keyboards you see today. We're also gonna do some real world testing to see if they can actually make your gameplay any better or give you a competitive edge. First, we need to explain what Hall effect switches are and how they came to be. It turns out the word Hall effect isn't just some buzzword, it's actually a scientific term. Unlike the Hawking effect, where black holes emit thermal radiation, or the tunnel effect, where quantum effects allow a particle to escape a potential barrier, the Hall effect is another scientific phenomenon just like those, but different, that occurs in nature. So how does it work? If you take a conducting plate or any conductor with a current and bring that magnet closer to it, you can measure the change in voltage that occurs on that conductor. This can be measured with extreme precision as well. While switches might be called Hall effect, what's really happening is a Hall effect sensor on the PCB with a magnet that influences the current in the switch. This is then read by the keyboard and translated to a key press. Essentially, this causes a force on electrons to move and the Hall voltage is then red. And there are two types of Hall effect sensors linear, analog, and digital. Hall effect sensors are used in various devices, from smartphones and cars to military equipment even, and have been around for a long, long time. In fact, Honeywell had a Hall effect keyboard dating back to the 1980s, which you probably saw in the recent Linus Tech Tip videos. So now that we know more about Hall effect switches and how they work, how are they any better than standard switches that use a metal leaf to make direct contact with the circuit? And as you may have noticed, I just said the word contact. Anytime there is contact, there is room for scratchiness, pieces rubbing together and wear and tear over time. Where typical switches last tens of millions of clicks, Hall effect switches last billions of clicks. They can be smoother, last longer, and feel better overall. Additionally, the polling rate goes from about 1000 hertz, which is a normal keyboard, to 8000 hertz on a Hall effect keyboard. Now let's talk about rapid trigger. In traditional keyboard switches, they have a set actuation point, meaning you need to press the switch to a certain distance to activate the key press. Then you have to lift up your finger to that same actuation point to reset the key press. In rapid trigger keyboards, you can dynamically set the actuation point and the reset point, typically to immediately press the key and immediately after the slightest release. That's kind of what people have been setting it to, but there's many different situations and it's, again, it's dynamic. This allows for the quickest reaction time, best accuracy, and lowest latency. This is the best for games that require kind of spamming buttons over and over again, or FPS games where you might be strafing and fighting and shooting at the same time. But here's the kicker. You aren't setting these actuation and reset points for the entire keyboard. You can actually set these on an individual basis so that each key has its own point of actuation and reset. This means the keyboard can be entirely personalized to your preference. There is one additional feature here that has not been explored and I'm not entirely sure I'll explore it unless I can find an actual use case. You can set up to four actions per key press, meaning you can have a set action for each distance the key's going down, even one for the release. The only thought I had for this was maybe you can hold down R to reload and when you let go, it switches weapons so you don't get caught with your pants down. That's what I call it when you're reloading and you get caught. Or maybe when you're light pressing and it's a walk and you're heavy pressing and it's a run. I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll get into that later. Today we're gonna be using two different keyboards to test things out IRL. And I don't wanna brag, but I'm no slouch when it comes to FPS games. The keyboards today I'm bringing along are two Hall effect keyboards that kind of just hit the market. And you're gonna see a lot more of these. The Boy 66 Pro, 65% keyboard with a knob, and the Kedis NJ80CP. This is a 75% board with a knob as well. Both of these are plastic cases, by the way. Let's start with Kedis. The NJ80CP comes in many different colors and configurations, including a pro and a non-pro version. The non-pro features a knob and a solid colored case, while the pro includes a customizable screen and transparent case. The option for mechanical or magnetic switches, you can switch between both, pretty neat. And the C model includes everything from the CP model, but removes the option of 2.5 gigahertz and Bluetooth connections. If you don't need those, you might want to look at a cheaper option. And today we're looking at the non-pro as this was the only stock option at the time, but it looks like all their models are in stock today. All models feature an Otemu magnetic pink switch, which about 40 grams of force, which seem to be linear, but the spec is not listed on their site. And you can remove any of the switches from the board hot swap for easier replacement if you find another brand or model of Hall effect switches that you like more. It has an aluminum plate and polycarbonate case. It also has south-facing RGB, and the RGB is actually no slouch. It's fantastic. 
fantastic. PPT keycaps with the option to swap some accents out as well. Keycap polar, cable, two stage feet, all the stuff you expect, Bluetooth 2.4 gigahertz connection. And the battery life is advertised at 24 hours with RGB on continuously and 320 hours with it off. And a nice little note that says these are actually tested in a lab and your results may vary. Now that we've talked about what's included, the actual typing experience and sound is not as great as you might think. Although I'm very particular and this is where the preference comes into play. The keycaps included are double shot PPT, but they seem to alter the sound of the board and make it sound kind of hollow. But I also think that contributes to the fact that this is a case mounted plate and not a gasket mounted plate, which would be much more deeper and sounding better. And I'm not sure why the keycaps sound different. Here's just a test between their keycaps with their keyboard and my own keycaps with their keyboard. they kind of do sound a little deeper, right? And also I'm not the biggest fan of the switches. They sound a little loud and almost clicky in comparison, but if you like that kind of sound, it doesn't bother you, that's great. Otherwise, they're not my favorite. Again, preference, right? It also lists all their keyboards having a thousand hertz pulling rate, which is interesting as most Holofit keyboards have an advertised 8,000 hertz pulling rate. Now the overall sound of the board isn't great. I'm sure there's some mods we can actually do to improve it. So let's take it apart and see what's inside to see what work they did. The Boy Pro 66, on the other hand, has a much smoother typing experience with lube in every nook and cranny. The keycaps also seem to be a different quality entirely, improving the sound and feel with linear style switches, making this sound kind of like a dream, to be honest. But it's also gasket mounted, so that's a huge improvement. Unlike the Keytis NJ80CP, which I believe is why it sounds so much better. Sorry, guys. It also has 8,000 hertz pulling rate, no Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz connection to achieve that fantastic pulling rate, fantastic RGB, I really like the options they have with this thing, and south facing switches. And we, as we take it apart, there's foam in the space bar for extra sound dampening as well, which makes this a, the best sound experience I could say for this board. Both keyboards do offer comprehensive software to customize the lighting, key presses, macros, remapping of the keys, everything you could think of that's included. Now the menu of the key disc I liked slightly more, because as you can see, as you're pressing, it shows you in the menu when you're activating things, kind of like a test without actually testing it out. But the one thing about that software is you have to close all your games just to change it and then relaunch your games back on. So now that we've talked about the keyboards, all their features, we can get into the nitty gritty of testing these things with different games. So how can they improve your gaming experience or do they at all? And which keyboard provides the better experience? We're gonna compare both these keyboards with my Zoom 65 with Gatoron Speed Silvers, which I use in every gaming scenario and they're absolutely my favorite to game with, period. Full stop. They are 45 grams of force and have a very short actuation point, which I really like. And we're gonna test two different games, Call of Duty and ugh, Valorant, which I've never played, but I'm willing to make the sacrifice for you guys, even if it makes me a little nauseous. So as I was playing, I switched between all three keyboards continuously. Here's how it went. In Call of Duty, I found myself dealing with some strange issues. For example, on the Boy 66, holding W is needed to move forward or to keep up a sprint once you've started one, but randomly it almost had interference from the other keys and kind of canceled that holding of the W key so it would stop my sprint. It was kind of strange. I even turned off the RGB, which is known to cause interference with Hall Effect switches when they're set to the highest sensitivity, and checked all the settings in the Boy 66 software, but it kept occurring. The Kedis NJ80CP, on the other hand, did not have this issue at all and it seemed to decently respond to all of my inputs, even if I didn't necessarily like the sound of it. In Valorant, things were smooth for both keyboards. I found myself adjusting the height and actuation point frequently between matches, which was really neat, honestly. Having that option, fantastic. It seemed to make a difference in my overall gameplay. I enjoyed the flexibility of being able to change the actuation point, even if I got owned in most of the matches I played. And it's my first time, be nice. So as I continued playing over the next few days, switching between all these various keyboards, I found something kind of interesting. I was starting to like being able to adjust the actuation of the different keyboards, but I didn't like the feel of the switches, the amount of pressure needed, the sound. It was kind of fascinating that there's this balance. Just because you can change the actuation of the switch doesn't mean it feels any different. It requires you to press deeper or less deep and the ability to only slightly raise it up and press back down. So it turns a normal keyboard press into something you can dynamically manipulate as you play and kind of adapt to. I can't speak for all Hall Effect keyboards, but it's obvious that quality can vary between them all as well. Both keyboards seem to have interference when RGB was turned on and sensitivity was set to the max. Just barely tapping a key or bumping it with my other finger would activate another switch. The ability to map multiple keys to one key press seemed a little more complicated to execute than actually practical as well. Unless there's something very specific use case you can find 
standard game that allows you to map this in a very specific way, I don't see myself using this feature. But I'd love to hear your take on it, so drop a comment down below if you know where you'd use this or how you use it exactly because I'm still not sure. So did this make me a better gamer? No, not really. Is it a must-have feature? No, not really. In my case, it only hindered my gaming experience as I've grown accustomed to my preference, and no other feature would have changed that. However, there's no saying it couldn't impact your experience and your playstyle, especially if you know a case for it where all the features of this thing would be utilized 100%. So here's my take on the whole thing. There are benefits. Some, better durability, a smoother-ish, honestly I didn't notice that much of a difference, typing experience, better response time for certain models, and the moment you hit that key, it's activating the key switch if you set it that way. But that does leave room for error and miss hits, so you gotta keep that in mind. But the biggest takeaway is that the switches are still the same. No matter how quick you are, you aren't changing how they feel. And I think feel is the biggest issue here. If you're gonna get a keyboard with Holofix switches, make sure it's good quality, has the right switches that you want and how they feel, and you'll be set. The Boy 66 has a few bugs to work out, but I think the switches have a little too much resistance on them. And the strange interference was causing some weird bugs in gameplay. The Kedis NJ80 CP is a solid option for someone who might really like it, and everything worked as intended, but it doesn't have the 8K polling rate, which isn't a deal breaker, but something to be aware of. After all, I'm still gonna pick my Gatoron Speed Silver switches over everything, and here's why. They feel the best. They're what I looked into, researched, and picked out. And I've trained myself to game with them the most. They have the perfect actuation and bottom out, and I enjoy playing with them. I think the next step now is to go out and find some comparable Hall Effect switches that I can put in these two boards to kind of fit my style more. So, are these keyboards a deal breaker? Uh, no, not really. But just keep in mind that this once again comes down to preference. It's all it always does. And the Hall Effect just lets you change the preference slightly. Now the biggest change I could see that would actually be game changing, switches you can set the resistance on. Kind of like the PS5 triggers, where you're physically changing how far down you press on the trigger to get it to activate. That would be huge. I hope you liked the video. If you'd like to subscribe, you know where that button is. If you'd like to comment, you heard before, there's many things I need you to talk about. Drop the comments down below. Thanks for watching Lucky Strike Tech. I'll catch you guys next time.